Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday evening, November 10th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for where you are. Well, it's November 10th. Normally, the hurricane season has all but ended by now. November storms are not nearly unheard of, especially in the Caribbean, but to have three systems that we're watching, one, two, and three, is kind of nuts for November. Very fitting for this record-breaking 2020 hurricane season. We officially broke 2005's record when Tropical Storm Theta formed uh, last night, becoming the 29th named storm of this year, breaking 2005's record of 28. And we're going to start off with Tropical Storm Ada still lurking here in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico, and we're still watching this for potential impacts, bringing impacts right now to western Cuba as it sunk down. Remember, it came up like this, did this little track, came back down, and now it's kind of coming back the other way. And as it's done that, it's uh, bringing more potential for flash flooding and gusty winds into western Cuba. If we take a closer look at this here, we'll see that the center of circulation is actually not centered underneath the thunderstorm clump here. Instead, it's right about there. You'll be able to see the outline of the rotation here on the west side, and that will guide you, the low-level clouds, showing you that the center is actually on the left edge, the western edge of the convection, indicating that the system is undergoing a little bit of some westerly shear already. And we talked about this shear developing in the Gulf. It's not particularly strong yet. Uh, but it's clearly having an impact on the storm by tilting it toward the east with height. You can see some of these cloud elements to the uh, west of the storm are kind of taking a direction out of that westerly direction, indicating that shear. And if we look at the water vapor satellite picture, we might be able to kind of understand why this is happening now. Remember, Ada has been rotating around an upper level low, and they've been doing a little dance, pinwheeling around each other. Uh, that upper low is now up here, having rotated all the way up like this overnight and during the day today, and now Ada is located on the southern side of that. So this upper low is kind of helping to induce just a little bit of northwesterly flow in the upper levels. Not a whole lot, but it's helping to facilitate a little bit of uh, westerly shear here. And so this is a tilted vortex at the moment. That said, it is still over warm water, and it wouldn't be unheard of to see some re-intensification of Ada. It is already stronger than it was yesterday, with winds back up to 60 miles an hour. The recon is in there right now, finding the center of circulation again on the western edge of this body of white, where the thunderstorms are. Strong winds on the south side. We haven't seen any public data come in from this uh, side yet. This is where the strongest wind would be, not here, but here where we can't see data yet. They have seen the storm center drifting slightly off toward the north-northwest, and the pressure has been rising during the last three passes. There's a third one here without a value yet. That's probably going to be about a millibar higher than the 991 that they just found a little while ago. And so at the moment, the storm seems to be suffering from a little bit of uh, decoupling here with this low-level center about to become fully exposed. Now, what we're going to be watching for over the next day or so is whether this can jump underneath of the curling convection over here to the east where the mid-level center is clearly evident on Cuban radar, which I can't show you right now, and also on satellites. So we have sort of the surface center over to the west, mid-level center over to the east, again, that tilt eastward with height. Whether this low-level low center can jump back underneath will determine whether this re-strengthens overnight tonight and tomorrow, and we're going to be watching for that for the potential to bring some gusty winds pretty close to the western Florida coastline as it moves back up here toward the north. And as we look at some of the model data for this today, we've been talking about how the track has been a little iffy in the Gulf of Mexico here because of some complex interactions between the storm's environment and the storm's intensity, because we are expecting this to encounter more wind shear as it comes back toward the north. So if we look at the GFS mid-level moisture map here, we see the storm. Here it is on the model. You can see most of the green here is on the eastern side, as it is in reality, because the storm is sheared out of the west. And as we come up over the next uh, day or so, you'll see on the model, we actually do get a little bit of intensification as it moves back up to the west of Naples on Wednesday morning. And uh, this, wouldn't be, this wouldn't be too unexpected here if it's able to wrap some of that convection back over the center. But as it moves farther north from there, we start to see that ridge build in to the southwest Gulf of Mexico right here. You see this high build in and this very strong northwesterly flow impinging on the cyclone from the northwest, pushing all the green colors here, all this moisture off to the eastern side. This represents a very strong wind shear. Remember, the low-level flow is very strong out of the south-southwest, and a lot of this moisture is flowing that direction back over the Florida Peninsula. But with the mid-level flow out of the northwest, these two flows are opposing each other strongly, a lot of shear there. 
and most model guidance is in agreement that we will see stark weakening of eta by the time it gets up near Tampa's longitude. And the, the ocean water also gets cooler here by a couple of degrees from where it is now, and that's not going to help the storm fight the shear. And uh, we can see that on the GFS, uh, this continues to weaken, and you'll see by the time it gets up near Tampa, it has completely decoupled. And by that, I mean the surface circulation here in black contours is located within the mid-level dry air. All the clouds and rain in this forecast would be mostly on the eastern side, and you would see a dry, naked swirl west of Tampa with, sure, gusty winds, perhaps a little bit of storm surge at the coast, but most of the rain on the eastern side and the wind probably not much higher than tropical storm force, 40 miles per hour or so on this kind of forecast. We can look for another opinion from the H wharf, which is a higher resolution model. And here's where it shows the storm. There's Cuba right now, and you can see the tilt. There's the surface center. There's the mid-level center. The wind barbs show you the rotation in the mid-level. So you can see the tilt here, just like in reality. And it shows that by tomorrow morning, we do get a little bit of intensification here, down to 978 millibars. Again, seeing this become a hurricane briefly would not be that surprising. But just like the GFS and virtually every other model, as this gets up close to Tampa, you can see it's getting unnervingly close here, but as soon as it gets up to this latitude, it starts immediately falling apart, and you start to see all this brown, this dry air showing up over the vortex again. This would become a naked swirl, and the mid-level circulation is over here, and all the moisture and rain is basically on this eastern side as this circulation begins to very quickly weaken. And what happens here is when the circulation weakens like that, it starts to drift northwest with the low-level flow, and uh, uh, in this case becomes a naked swirl in the big bend of Florida and most of the rain again to the east. So in this case, the forecast really hinges on how long does it maintain some kind of strong intensity as it approaches western Florida coastline, because that will determine how much uh, wind and surge impacts to expect. If it really is a hurricane here, as it is on the H wharf on Wednesday evening, then you could expect the tropical storm force wind field to extend up here, perhaps raking the, the western part of Florida with some winds over 40 miles per hour or so, and some potential for surge. You're going to get rain either way here, uh, because the east side is going to be the wet side. So this is expected by most models to get at least close enough to provide some rain and the potential for flash flooding will be there. Right now, most models don't bring this all the way inland. Uh, even a circulation like this, though dry, would be windy, but so far it's staying offshore on most forecasts. But we can't really guarantee uh, how long this is going to hold together, because if it holds together longer, it's going to keep following the mid-level circulation, and that's what you have to track. And that mid-level circulation gets a lot closer to the coast, so if this is managing to stay underneath of that, then it could be a more significant weather event for this section of coastline near and south of Tampa. But right now we're expecting this to really be in a hostile environment by this time, and weakening is generally expected across all computer simulations right now. So that's really what, what we're looking for as this comes north. But as it stands, the NHC track has shifted a little bit farther east today, as some of these models are showing it a little bit stronger initially, which allows it to come farther north before potentially falling apart. So instead of some of these forecasts that were coming out like this into the central gulf yesterday real early, they're sneaking up potentially all the way into the big bend of Florida. And so now the NHC has this getting into the central Florida panhandle. Important to point out here that by the time it gets here, this is likely to be a totally dead storm, like totally dead, probably only some rain on the northeast side potential for flash flooding could extend well up into Georgia and the Carolinas with this if it carries moisture northeastward but as far as the actual track of the cyclone very little weather would likely be associated with this if this actually got up near Tallahassee like it is on this forecast right now farther south it could still be a different story we have a new tropical storm watch for the western part of the Florida coastline as again this could be sneaking up close enough even if it's offshore to bring strong winds potential storm surge with southwesterly flow off of the ocean and of course rainfall on the eastern side and we can see that the core of heaviest rain on the WPC forecast is remaining offshore on this five-day forecast uh, but we saw in those models very strong moisture fetch on the east side is moving over Florida and I wouldn't be surprised if this rainfall forecast increases a little bit for portions of the Florida Peninsula and uh, we'll see if we have a significant flash flooding threat there uh, by, we by the time we get to Wednesday and Thursday. Chances are we're going to see more rain here. Um, the first contour here is one inch, so it's basically saying less than an inch over most of this region. That forecast could come up. We'll keep an eye on it. 
All right, so that's Ada still watching this as it comes northeast. A couple of days left to deal with it. What a pain this storm has been. But it's not the only one out there, and we have a couple more storms to watch. We have a new tropical storm named Theta. This was a subtropical transition. It was originally a non-tropical cyclone, and we have this big old jet stream in front here to its south, but it kind of got cut, cut off underneath the upper-level trough here and has been designated... A uh, tropical cyclone by NHC, and one of the reasons it's being called tropical is because you can see a very tightly, tight, vigorously rotating circulation here. Not a lot of organized deep convection over the center. It's maybe a little surprising this isn't being called subtropical instead, but either way, it's out in the middle of the ocean here. The Azores Islands are way up to its northeast. It's expected to go well south of them. And uh, according to the forecast from NHC, uh, it's unlikely to affect very many land areas. It could end up near Madeira here, the island that you can see just to the southeast of that day five point later in the week. But is, it is expected to be weakening over cooler water by that time and perhaps some more wind shear and uh, unlikely to be a really significant weather event. Uh, but another name on the list, S sustained winds right now about 70 miles per hour. We'll see if it can make another hurricane, uh, another name in the Greek alphabet. And again, we have another system to watch. Uh, this is a satellite view of the southwestern Atlantic. Uh, there's Ada again. And uh, we have an area of disturbed weather we're watching currently near the Dominican Republic in Puerto Rico. And what this is currently consisting of is an area of mid-level rotation. You might be able to make out with your eyes just a little bit of rotation here cyclonically. There's not a lot at the surface right now, but it is rotating in the mid-levels. This is a batch of moisture. That's just kind of sitting here and is going to drift westward into the Caribbean over the next few days. And we can see this happen on the GFS forecast. You can see it in the wind barbs here. There's the rotation in the mid-levels, kind of a mid-level low here. This is going to get pushed southwestward. And as it does that, uh, you know, it's the Caribbean and even late in the year in November, uh, the atmosphere gets a little cooler aloft, but the water is still very warm underneath. So there's a lot of instability. So when you get this little disturbance in here, there's likely to be thunderstorm activity with it this time of year. And enough that it generates a surface perturbation and we get a little surface low to form with this on a lot of model runs, not just the GFS, but the European as well and many others. And this happens southeast of Jamaica on this particular model run in a few days. This is still a ways out. This is by early Sunday on this model run. And then this is going to get steered westward and potentially intensify into some sort of storm, uh, potentially another hurricane in the Western Caribbean, given that if we look aloft, uh, there's really pretty nice upper level environment over it, pretty favorable, not a lot of shear here, light easterly wind is uh, favorable for development of some kind of storm again, and if this bears out, uh, we're going to be looking at another threat to Central America, unfortunately, and if we look at some of the steering for this, if we go out to late Monday night, early Tuesday morning, you'll see it's come down here near Nicaragua and Honduras again, shades of Ada just a little while ago, which this was the original landfall for Ada, don't forget, before it came up here and did this whole thing. And uh, this unfortunately is getting close to that region again on the model runs. Now, in, in this case, it's still unclear exactly where this will be in six days. This is a long range forecast. If you look at the mid-level flow, the edge of the ridge is right about here. And so there is room for this to come a little bit farther north toward Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico instead if it's stronger. But if you look at the low-level flow, there's another cold front and batch of cool air expected to, to drive into the southern U.S. And so there's a very strong northeasterly flow at the low levels. This is also similar to when Ada hit Nicaragua. That is trying to force the storm to dip south here again similar to Ada. So we still have to see how this bears out. It's six days out and the steering flow could change along with the location where this forms. That will be important. Right now we don't have a focused surface cyclone to even track and we all know that can introduce uncertainty. But this will be something else to watch uh, but next week, not this week. This is still about five or six days away from being a problem uh, but we'll keep an eye on it. NHC currently gives about 80% chance of that one forming here as it comes west. So again, Ada coming back near Florida, likely to bring some impacts, at least some rain, gusty winds to western Florida, the Tampa area, and parts of the Florida Peninsula. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, tropical storm watch is up for the coast for uh, Wednesday and Thursday. And we have Theta, not really a significant threat to land out in the middle of the Atlantic, and then another storm potentially forming in the Caribbean and approaching Central America next week. Stay safe, everyone. Be prepared. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.